This is a chapter called Black Sun. Friday, June 4th, just past noon. The smoke drifting over the highway at the tipping point of spring into summer reminds Sitlali of birds. Like that one time she saw a swirl of starlings as she stood on the edge of a cornfield somewhere. Where? Imagine this, the secret logic of a flock of birds in flight, swooping, swerving according to their own inner time signature. Somewhere, someone with the right knowledge must have traced its architecture, plotted it carefully, unwound its inner springs to reveal the mechanism, the rhythm, the organization. It couldn't be random, she had thought at the time. Eyes trained to the aerial zigzagging of thousands of starlings, a protoplasm of birds swelling and contracting in a single body like an ever-changing Rorschach blot, like pointillistic thumbprints smudging the sky. A murmuration, that was the name for it. Mentioned in an NPR feature she heard years later about a massive cloud of birds that appeared before sunset in Denmark during spring a seasonal sky dance halfway across the world. Was there a leader or a navigator, Lali had wondered, a conductor who indicated which direction to take? Or were they all followers of one another or something else, attuned somehow to what each other individual was thinking and feeling? Scale-free correlation. The scientists on the radio said at first, they thought murmurating starlings were like flying avalanches with each bird a snow particle poised, tippy-tippy toes at criticality, capable of shifting speeds as a single body. But now, the scientists, particle physicists, knew that starlings were more flying magnets than avalanches, simultaneously shifting not only speed but position. They were electrons, they said, pulled into synchronous orbits under the spell of magnetization. As one bird veered right, it signaled seven of its neighbors to do the same, who signaled to seven more and seven more, a lightning game of telephone without static or degradation. Low signal to noise ratio. It was an anti-predator tactic, sparked by the peripheral approach of a falcon or hawk, the starlings banding together to form a collective more powerful than any individual could be. But how did that first bird trigger the movement of the whole? if each member of the flock was busy responding to every other member. Was there a first bird to speak of? How did it shift all at once? How did it burst spontaneously into total transformation, as if from nowhere or nothing? Somewhere, someone knew the principle of organization, but not me. I don't have the language to say how it works. I can only watch and marvel. That is what she thought then, watching starlings swoop and pulse as one body as she stood outside a gas station half a lifetime ago on the edge of a field at the center of the continent. Not the dazzle of synchronized starlings this time, just regular grackles headed north with an urgency, fleeing something. Lali's distracted, driving to the credit union on a lunch errand, trying to gun it so she can be back at the Centro office for a 1 p.m. conference call with the youth climate funders. So it doesn't occur to her what they might be fleeing until she turns on the radio, NPR again. She hears the report like a premonition before she sees it for herself. Uncanny, the heavy cloud of black smoke blowing over the highway from the southwest, from somewhere near the river. An explosion at the old refinery, says the radio.